Welcome to Sausage on a Fork, a podcast dedicated to the UK's longest running children's drama programme, Drain Chill. My name's Neil, and in each episode, I'll interview a former cast member about their life before, during, and after their time on the programme. Okay, welcome to the latest episode of Sausage on a Fork, and it is a first at this episode <laughs> of Sausage on a Fork. It's the first time I've been joined by someone who played a pupil that went to another school and didn't join Grange Hill at some point. <laughs> I've been joined by none other than Danny Cunningham, who played Liam. Danny, welcome to Sausage on a Fork. Thank you for having me, Neil. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. What we'll do, Danny, is we'll start the way we start every episode. And yeah, sure. you can tell us how you first got into acting. Mm. Well, my mother used to work at the Alhambra Theatre in Bradford. Right. She was she was a dancer when she was a young girl as well. And then she got married, had kids and stuff. And, uh-huh. and I came with the youngest of six kids. Right. So I was like a living doll for my older brothers and sisters anyway. <laughs> right. okay. She used to dress me up as a diddy man and stuff like that. And, you know, <laughs> so I, I, I kind of as I kind of had no choice. And then as a young kid, I used to go to the Alhambra quite a lot in Bradford, which is a wonderful theatre. I still go there now. We've actually got a plaque on there for my mum. Um, uh, we had a wake there as well. And uh, so I used to go and see a lot of shows. Kind of got the bug for that there. I started going to a little drama group in Bradford as a very young lad at uh, the Bradford Playhouse. Right. And then I started to, I was always a, because my mum was a dancer, all my brothers were, and sisters were, it was always a lively household for that kind of stuff. Right, okay. Lots, lots of different kinds of music. So the dancing was always a thing. Yeah. So I danced, I sung. I went to a little sort of theatre school in, in in Bradford first, Wilson's. He just retired last year, actually, Gordon Wilson, an amazing teacher. Uh, so I kind of got the bug for all for, for all all the sort of the, all the arts that way. Right. And then started doing a few amateur stuff in Bradford for all the different, you know, the heat and amateurs, uh, uh, the Catholic players, things like that, doing different shows. And then, yeah, just got the bug that way. Started dancing and singing and acting five nights a week. Wow. Every night, Monday to Friday, sometimes on a Saturday, always doing shows as well as playing rugby. I was lucky because the school I went to, Nab Wood, they finished at 2.30 in the afternoon. Oh, they had nice. like continental times. Yeah. So I could still go and do a bit of rugby and then go and do the go, go and do the other bit, you know, oh, the other stuff later on. <laughs> but a bit, anyway, I managed to do it for a while. And then um, after a couple of years of doing a few uh, local shows, I went and auditioned for Italia Conte. Right. I got in there. I was very lucky. I got a a, a, a a grant from Bradford Council, one of the last people to get with them. And I'm always very grateful to Bradford Council for that. And uh, yeah, went to Italia Conte. Brilliant. Went there at about 13, 14. Uh, lived with the family, the Jass. Spurton Vera Jass is from the Isle of Dogs. They were lovely. <laughs> so Alan, I lived with them for uh, quite a few years. Alan went to the school as well. And so, yeah. Did a sort of Dick Whittington went down to London with my cap in hand and, <laughs> and started at Italia Conti at quite a young age. Oh, tremendous. Yeah. yeah. And and so did you get much work then? Well, yeah, because they had an agency. Yeah. Uh, and I'm actually, I'm, I'm now represented by Gaynor Shewitt again now. I'm back with SCA Management. Right. So I've sort of gone full circle and she's, uh, yeah, we've known each other a long, long time. Um, So they have an they had an agency and within about, probably about three months, I've been at Italia Conti. I started working Brilliant. straight away. Just a couple of commercials. Because in Bradford, I, used to do, I was never the best, but I used to do a bit of break dancing. Oh, right. Okay. So, so that was my in to like a little, you know, a little niche market. Yeah. So I did a couple of couple of commercials, uh, things like that. And then uh, obviously dancing as well. I was on a hot shoe show with Wayne Sleep, did a bit of tap on that. And then, right. and then a bit a bit of a, a bit of break dancing on that. And then yeah, just uh, constantly kept uh, getting little bits and bobs, did a few little dramas, did a thing called Timmy and Vicky, uh-huh. which was a, a nice sort of educational drama. Uh, we filmed that in the first summer, that was in London. Uh, yeah, and it just uh, it just snowballed from there. Yeah, and, and were, were you at Italia Conti with anyone who we might, we might know we might have heard of? Oh, mate, when I first went there, Brain Jewel was a massive show. Yeah. A massive show anyway. Phil Redmond's a genius. Absolute yeah. genius. Yeah. When I was a kid, watching Green Jill was was a must. Right. I know some 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 kids didn't get to watch it because the parents thought it was a bit risque at the time, but yeah. it dealt with all the issues that that we were going through. Mm-hmm. So as a kid, you you, you empathised with it, and they empathised with you, and it was a great drama. 
So when I first went to Italia Conte, one of my best pals, I think you did an interview with him, Vincent, Vincent Matthews. Yeah, Vinny, <laughs> good lads. And, and he was like, <laughs> I'd been watching him on telly, you know. Yeah. And then he's my pal. And he's yeah. a great guy, Vince. And Lisa Yoke. Right, know? yeah. I was like, I was like and, and obviously uh, George, uh, who played uh, George Armstrong, God rest yeah. his soul. Big people in my life. As a kid, I watched yeah. them in my living room. And now I was at school with them. Yeah. And they were my mates, you know. Yeah. And I, uh, it, yeah. So there was always a bit of a bar for that. Sort of, you know, Grange Hill was the it was the show, you know. So yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Okay. In that sort of in those sort of circles, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and but so yeah. you, you mentioned some of the jobs that that you got. Now you were in a program called a uh, Comrade Dad. Oh my! Um, I forgot all about that. Right now, was I, that I, George Cole. It was George Cole. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. get to work with him, but because I, I, I'm only asking that because you're credited as being boy with balloon. So without being honourable, I, I I don't think it was a massive part that you're asking. Listen, that. there's no such thing as small parts on the small actors, Neil. And I'm only about five foot five. Brilliant. <laughs> did, you, did you get to work with, with, with him at all? Like? Well, on that one, I remember that. And it was a... Yeah, I did. I got to work with him, but I was on a, in a long shot. All oh, right, Okay. <laughs> And I remember being in the hotel waiting for hours. There was some, as there are sometimes, problems with weather when you've got exterior shots. And it went on for ages and ages. And then they brought me out and just did a quick shot and that was it. So I didn't really, I can't <laughs> say I worked with him such, on that job. Right. But then I went back a few years after. What was the name of the job? It was playing another kind of, like his kind of spiv character, a businessman. I can't remember what it was called. But I did another job with him when I was older, in my 20s. All right. Oh, right. Okay. It was, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and you also you you you, were, you promoted there from boy with balloon to youth. Uh, you played youth when um, you were in an episode of Bread. <laughs> as well. That no, was my I, first ever. Because I have to talk about Bread. Sorry, what were you going to say? Sorry. Oh, mate, no, I, absolutely. Uh, again, Carla Lane. Uh, yeah. She uh, it was that was one of my that was that was my first ever speaking role on TV. I think. Right. Wow. Can I tell you the line? I remember. Yeah. Really. Go ahead. Go for it. So Aveline's walking down the road, like, you know, she's walking. <laughs> yeah. Rather tasty, excuse me. You know, I was in character. That's right, okay. And, 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 and I turned around to her, I said, I'm, I'm a little nipper at that time, you know, and I turned around, she's she's doing a little strut down the street, like she's going down a catwalk, and, and I turned around and I go, eh, how about it, sweet ass? <laughs> and she turns around to me and goes, isn't it time you went home and got your great water? That was it. Brilliant. So that, that, was was it. Have been, that would have been Julie Coleman as well, was it? Yes. That was a, no, not yeah. Melanie Hill. It would have been Julie yeah. Coleman. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. And then the next one, I've got to talk about this because I found this out the other day and you know I found this out because I messaged you about this because I didn't believe that it was true, but you were in uh-huh. Little Shop of Horrors. Yeah. Yeah, man. And, yeah. and that genuinely blew my yeah. mind because I, I yeah. must have watched that film yeah. hundreds of times and I yeah. never knew you were in it. It blew my mind when I did it. And not only am I in it, my one of my... my uh, my niece's son, so my, my, my great nephew, he sourced an episode of uh, Family Guy. Right. And that scene, that scene. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah. But, mic drop. I'm done, mate. I'm done. I've been on Family Guy. <laughs> Brilliant. Because, for anyone that doesn't know, can you tell the people listening what scene you're in in Little Shop of Horrors? It's the do scene when, when he first finds the plant, finds Audrey 2, and he buys the plant. And there's a little scene where there's, there's, there's a few guys stood in a row and, and they think, good, good for you. Do, 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 do. Good, good for you. Do, 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 do. Danny John Jules was in it as well. Yeah, yeah. And uh, a funny thing at the audition for that, we all went to an open audition at Pineapple, as you did back then. Uh-huh. And there were a few of us from college went. So I've gone in the lineup, got kicked out, got kicked out of the audition. Not, you don't take it personally, it's just what it is, you know, it's a bit yeah. of a cattle market. So I'm sat at the back of the studio and then they're trying to work out the, you know, the, the uh, the heights of people and trying to get people to match and then the, one of the one of the lads that was in the lineup was actually one of the crew and he wanted to do a scene in it so that you know and because of his size I think they were they were having a bit of a discussion and the point to me and I went actually can you come back in the line <laughs> and it was as simple as that mate Brilliant. and then I, and that was it and then had a week at, we had a week at Pinewood Studios and the Double O Seven Studio and it was epic mate it was unbelievable the oh. sets were like it was like West Side Story yeah. Amazing sets, absolutely yeah. amazing, and you know, work at Frank Oz there, Rick Moranis. Yeah. Between shots, he was playing catch with a with a with a with a baseball glove, and, and the cameraman 
there's like millions of pounds worth of equipment yeah. <laughs> and they're just you know playing catch with a ball between it, it was uh yeah that was that was quite something and quite... so is that you on the record as well then no go, no all oh, right so okay. no 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 okay. no we just mind right okay and what are the... i mean it could have been i was i was up for it you know what i mean I, 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 I... <laughs> <laughs> and what one of the reasons why I think I've never recognised you on that? So you got a magnificent head of hair in that. Like I've got a bleached white flat top. Yeah, I look yes. like Billy Idol. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Okay, um, so we'll move on then. A couple of years later, there was all the bits like Rockless Babies and and, and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, Ian Hogg, great actor, really nice guy, um, really nice fella, sweet fella. But you were also in an episode of the comic strip presents. Yes. Um, Did you kill my brother? Did Shouldn't you kill my walking? brother? Yeah, yeah. Alexis Sale. Alexis yeah. Sale. It was the one, and, and Beryl Reed, Peter yeah. Richardson's in it. Dexter Fletcher, yeah. who was Dexter Fletcher, was in everything, wasn't he? In, oh, wow. In, in, in them days. Dexter Fletcher's like, a genius, mate. And look at the movies he's doing now. Yeah, just, that, brilliant, yeah. brilliant. But also, yeah. Maluki Christie. Yes. Was in that, who'd been in yeah. Angel as well. Yeah. Also, and, I'll tell you else is in that scene, and he'd only just started acting. Eddie Marsan, yeah, yeah, Eddie, yeah, because Eddie Marsan, he he turned up in Grange Hill for a bit. Did well. he? I never knew yeah. that. Yeah, he wow. was. Uh, he played. He played an older brother of one of the one of the kids in the school. Wow, well, I never three or four, wow. three or four episodes there. Yeah, episodes of school day, son, isn't it? Just and then again, as I say, like I know we talked about the boy, boy, boy with balloon and the youth and. <laughs> In that comic strip, you were youth in restaurants, uh, youth in Chinese oh, restaurants. Man, all the classics, mate. All um, the classics. You, there was an episode of a program called Stolen, where your character's credited as Yob. <laughs> I, 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 I remember this. You were in. You played a burglar in Harry Enfield. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. I can vaguely remember it, but I can't for yeah. like really remember which character. You it was with the old. It was with the two old gits. Ah, oh, right, okay. So someone someone knocked on their door first, and then uh, uh, like a sales call or something, and I knocked on the door. And <laughs> it was quite surreal. And one of them, you know, you do that. It's, it's live studio audience. audience. So you, you rehearse all week, and then you film it on the weekend, you know. I had a few yeah. pals came to watch it as well. So what was lovely about that is I, it was the first series. I got to see all those characters wow. before. And it was, you know, watching Wayne and Wayne at a slob, watching, yeah. you know, Kathy and that. And it, it was just great seeing them. And obviously, the McCann, uh, uh, Joe McCann, with, with the scouts and all yeah. that, and all those characters, and I got it was just such fun. It was, and I was just yeah. a young lad then, do you know what I mean? Brilliant. So I knock on the door, and then they answer, and uh, a, Harry Enfield answers the door, and I go, All oh, right, mate, I'm a burglar. And he goes, Have you got any ID? And I pull the bag <laughs> out and says, Burglar. And nobody laughed. <laughs> nobody laughed. It's meant to be a comedy show. So I was on a bit of a back foot, and afterwards, he came up to me and he went, That way, mate, we'll put someone after. Yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah. Put, we'll put a bit of kind of laughter on it. I'm, I'm, but, yeah. I'm, I'm guessing the fact that you were with the old gits, you, your character didn't come off too well. Oh, I got <laughs> annihilated, man. I got completely <laughs> annihilated by them both. Yeah, yeah. It was a, yeah, a reaction character. But yeah, it's a whipping boy, you might say. <laughs> Moving on then. So there was then a screenplay and a little bit of lippy. Yep. Right. Which, Chris Bernard. when I've read that, that must have been like quite sort of like a groundbreaking for the time. For, for the you know, I think I think it was. I think it was a little bit before its time. Yeah, definitely. It was really lovely. It was a really well written thing. Lovely. There was a bit of comedy, a bit of light and shade in there. Um, uh, it was an interesting piece. That yeah, I had a great time in Liverpool filming that as well. Chris right. Bernard. We had uh, yeah, because I'd just finished on Grange Hill. I just my my character just finished, and then I went right. and filmed that, and then. I, no spoilers, but I came back later, as you know. <laughs> yeah, after, yeah, yeah. After, after I'd just filmed that, so it was right, a, okay. It, it, there was a bit of a yeah. You know, I was on a bit. I get a bit of momentum then. Okay. Um, yeah, Ken Cranham was in it as well. He was. He was yeah. great fun. His character's yeah. great. It's great, and it's a it's a funny piece. It's yeah. a really funny piece, and uh, yeah, yeah, that was a good. That really? was because you were piece. you were one of the leads in that way. Uh, yeah. 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 Kind. Of, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so so we'll talk about Grey Jill then. Before we before we talk a lot about it, Liam, I am every time I put an, an episode of the podcast out, I will put it, picture clues online as to who the guest is going to be. 
And the person that guesses correctly first who it's going to be gets to ask ask a question to the next guest. So yeah. I've got a question for you from someone called Harry Whaley. And I always feel like I'm on going live or something when I do some of this. Questions coming from Harry Whaley. Um, <laughs> and I remember doing that with Rachel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Harry's question is, he said, you know, and you've mentioned the fact that you were a fan, you, you watched Grey Jail and all that. So thinking about the character that you had of Liam, okay, he was wondering if if the character of Liam could have been in an earlier series from the first, say, 10 years, or a, 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 a storyline. Which storyline or, or series would you like, like, would you have liked Liam to have been in? Involved oh, with. That's the question, isn't it? Oh. And you, he wouldn't have had to necessarily be at a, a St. Joe's pupil either. So. Yeah, I think you'd have, yeah, probably you don't want, I don't want to spin it from the start, probably. But, you right. know, that new, that new, I guess everyone would say that, just being that yeah. new show that was groundbreaking at that time and yeah. nobody knew what it was going to do and how people were going to respond to it and, you know, would it get the Marmite effect or. Yeah, because that must have been it. Must have been a quite a thing, definitely. You know, yeah. Fair play to the BBC for doing it to start yeah. with, and like I say, Phil Redmond's a genius. Anyway, as we know, he's got the mildest touch with everything that he mm-hmm. does. He's always he, he's always on point, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It, yeah, it deals with issues that, like I say, that was that that was the beauty of it. It was a great, great entertaining drama, but it dealt with issues. And I think, yeah, probably in at the start. And, Brilliant. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right then. So, um. So you were in series, probably series 15. It was, it was on air in 92. So you came in as Liam, um, who was a St. Joe's pupil, supposed to be 15, 16, but you were about 21, 22. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you filled that. Now, before we talk about that, like, was that weird? It was a little bit, but you know, I'm 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 a little fella, I'm one of the little people, you know. Yeah. And uh, so I always I had a, I had a back then, not so much now. I had a bit, I had sort of a younger younger face. So I always I think that to my advantage, really, right. I managed to keep working as a as a sort of playing younger parts because obviously, if you're under sixteen, you can only work so many hours as well. Right. So that's a you know that was another tick in my box because yeah. I, I could play down, I could play them younger parts. And they could get a bit more gas out of the chamber, like you know what I mean. You could work a few extra hours, <laughs> yeah. So that so that worked in my favour. So I was very lucky then that I could, you yeah. know, for example, and, Granger, I could play a sixteen-year-old, fifteen, sixteen-year-old, and uh, yeah. And yes, I was lucky. Did the accent come easy? Because I've got I've got to be honest. When when you first came on and started talking, and I was like, oh my god, I was not expecting that voice to come out of your mouth. I'll oh mate, I'll, t- I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> then I, I mean, you know. it's Oh, blimey, governor. <laughs> I, yeah. Uh, it was funny because when, 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 when I'd finished filming it, Ian Connolly used to knock about with Ian a bit. Yeah. And we flipped, we went down to where we did a charity football match down in Brighton and Hove. Uh, he'd sorted it all out. We had a real good, a real good uh, weekend away. Yeah. And um, uh, Ray Winston was on it. He was playing with oh, us. Right. And, uh, and we're in the changing room before we go on to the football pitch. And he's, and he's like, so what's your name, man? I said, I'm Danny. He said, what did you do then? I said, I'm an actor. He said, what are you working on? I said, I'm in Grange. He went, what with that accent? I said, yeah. He said, oh, you're a proper actor. Brilliant. So I was like, oh, that's my thing. I say, yeah. You, you you know must I mean, been, I was all right with that. You must have walked right. out with your head. Oh, that's man, I was, I, I, like I said, I want five foot five then, mate, or ten foot tall. You know what I mean? I can imagine, yeah. yeah. Okay. So Liam was Justine Dean's boyfriend. Now, that yes. must have, you, you were, must have been the envy of so many lads up and down, fong, fong. Yeah, like <laughs> because uh, when Kevin Bishop was been on here, and when Kevin Bishop said he he, he reckoned they must have they, they couldn't have been a lad in the country that that, that didn't fancy yeah. just, Justine Dean, like so. Oh yeah, she was it. Yeah. So yeah, so um, as I say, he came in as, as Justine Dean, but not only that. You were a pupil at another at, at another school, and yeah. not not yeah. just any school, like the yeah. big rival school, the rivals, like, yeah, Saint Joseph's, the Montagues, and, and the Capulet. Yeah, mate. it's going to say it's you, a proper Romeo yeah. and Juliet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The thing with with Liam was he he, he was a he was a hard lad, 
<laughs> probably had a bit of an art of gold, but he was, yeah. you know, he, he was in as an art lad. And in the first yeah. scene, Liam and, and we see Liam, he, he's with just, he meets Justine walking to school and Chrissy's with them as well. This is when the big, the biggest storyline Radio was doing at the time was uh, Chrissy, Chrissy's pregnancy. So Chrissy's there and she says, look, she, she knew when to make herself scarce. So she walks off down the underpass and Justine and, and Liam are walking behind. And these lads start having a go at Chrissy. And Justine says, oh, we've got to do something here. And Liam's really hesitant, obviously, because there's about 10 lads from Grey Jail and he's the only one <laughs> from St. Joe's. But in the end... Not that sh- hard, then. In the end, he, sh- he does shout at them and he gets... Ah, but he, not stupid. He gets chased <laughs> by them. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And that was a bit of a sign of things to come with, with Grey Jail and, and Chip. But what I liked about it, it didn't happen straight away. It was... A, it was quite a slow build up. It's um, solid. From, solid. Like, yeah, because Justine and Liam then met up one lunchtime and they saw a, a group, another group of lads from um, from Grangel. And they say, Justine, is he bothering you? And she's like, No, it's all right. But the lads didn't listen. He just he still wants to carry on. Yeah. He still wants to have that have a yeah. go. Um, Young peacocks. Yeah, and but Liam there, this is one where Liam does stand his ground and there's two oh. massive there's two massive lads and to the point where you'd, I don't even know what their character names were in it they were huge but, and they, but they weren't uh-huh. wearing the school uniforms they were obviously like six forms or ex-pupils or something and Liam did stand his ground there and you think it's about to kick off but then Miss Janowitz comes over and broke her up she was the yeah. American teacher if you remember yes it, yes, uh, yes I do remember yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Marita Black and they broke it up and then, <laughs> then she says because she says something like oh just you, you need to get back to school and she goes oh well I'll just say bye to Liam but then they start kissing and she went a goodbye kiss doesn't take forever you need to get back to school like, <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean things like that I, I say you know, is it weird and obviously you, you were at them but Ra- Rachel Roberts must have been about 17, 18 yeah, at the time, I'm, I'm guessing she was 18 because of the scenes that you were involved. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've never, I've never thought about that. Yeah, I guess. No, I don't know. Yeah. I guess she was. She must have been. Yeah. About, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 17, you know, 18, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Just, um, then there's a little bit where you see. I was trying to work out why this scene was in it because they, they're they temping bowling. There's another temping bowling scene later on when all the inmates are there, but there's this one where it's just Liam. And Justine, and it's weird because nothing really happens in the scene. It's literally like I remember a third yeah. second scene, and Liam's got a bright orange shirt, like bowling, proper bowling. I remember, shirt. I remember doing it, yeah, yeah. And I couldn't remember, I couldn't work out if if he was supposed to be working at the bowling alley, or no, if he was I don't think so. I think it was just a date. I think we were just on a date because it had to remember, right? Man. I'm sure the yeah. shirt's got Liam. As well, honestly. So maybe he was in a bowling. I, I don't know, but it was like he's like Superman. He wears his own name. <laughs> yeah. yes, that's what it was. But I was, I was trying to work. I was thinking, what? what there's literally uh, no relevance <laughs> for it to be there. It's literally. No, I remember there. we had some fun bowling. I remember. Yeah. I, think, I think I think Rachel did her like she did a she got a strike. I think at one point. I think yeah. if I remember rightly, it was like yeah, break and brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, and then again, like the next time we see the was at the bowling alley again. And this is where it starts to come out a little bit about, like, sort of some of Liam's activities, shall we say. Yeah. <laughs> um, because all Liam's mates were there. And Justine says, oh, do you, do you always hang around together with your mates? And um, one of the lads goes, <clears throat> well, that's what gangs usually do. Yeah. And so you're starting to think there, like, yeah, yeah. What, what, what's going on like um, a little bit darker now yeah, yeah. but because Justine couldn't believe that they used the word gang gangs yeah, yeah. because she says aren't you aren't you a bit old for, for, for calling yourselves a gang because gangs were for little kids who like knocked on old people's doors and, <laughs> and, and ran, ran away off. and stuff but Liam t- sort of like backs his mates up and says well that's what other gangs do but not this one and you think, so you know when when you got the part, was it was it explained to you like this is what it's going to be like? Liam's going to be this, yeah. this, this character, like 
Yeah, there was a bit of a sorry arc to it, uh, and the, the setup that that's kind of sort of Romeo and Juliet scenario, and he was going to yeah. have his gang at Joseph's, and then obviously the the other the, the other yeah. the, the, the at school gang, shall we say, his extracurricular yeah. activities, <laughs> yeah. um, uh, and that 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 was the story arc. Yeah, right. uh, okay. And again, it's dealing with. I mean, it's no different now. No, you know these issues are still the same, young lads. Uh, young lasses, even as we know, you know, yeah. brandishing knives and stuff, and it's it it's still there. It's still, yeah. it's still very relevant at kids at that age, and it's to 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 put it at the you know above the sort of parapet there was a, was a great thing to do. Yeah, it, it's and it still is. It still has complete relevance, doesn't it? Definitely, definitely. Because yeah. uh, just Justine says to Liam, you know, what 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 does your gang do? And he just says, well, wouldn't you like to know? And that's when, as you say, like it starts getting that little bit, a bit darker, and you're suspecting what, what, what is it that they do? Like you know, uh, something's not quite right here. And obviously, we, we you've talked about the sort of the Romeo and Juliet situation because obviously Justine starts getting grief from the Grange Hill lot, and yeah. and Liam gets grief from St Joe's. And there's one where yeah. Liam's waiting for Justine, and two of the lads from St Joe's come over and start like. Laughing at him and saying, Oh, have you been stood off? And he's going, Oh, no, I'm, I'm waiting for Dan O'Reilly. <laughs> and, and one of the lads goes, Oh, yeah, I know who that is. That's the, bl- that's the blonde one yeah, who made yeah, the yeah. scare. <laughs> uh, so, because they obviously knew who he was waiting for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they couldn't understand why he was getting involved with a Green Jail girl. And one of them says, Well, maybe she's a spy. And Liam was, a, Liam was amazed that she had turned up. So, he goes looking for it. He, he assumes she'll be in Grange Hill working on the newspaper. Unbeknownst to him, an ambulance has go, goes past him that Justine's in. Uh-huh. I don't know if you, I don't know if you remember this bit, but Justine had been attacked, and Liam went looking for her in the school, and he was found by Mister Griffiths, the caretaker. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, yeah. Right yeah. now, everyone who's on. Like just says about George A. Cooper, who played Mr. Griffiths. Like, just what an absolute legend, legend. of legend. a bloke. Legend, yeah. And, like, did you did, did you know who he was before you worked with him? What you mean prior to Grange Hill? Yeah. No, no. Right. Okay. No. Okay. But yeah, everyone just says he was just an absolute legend and and yeah. just a just a cracking fella. Yeah. As well, like great fella, yeah. And so obviously. He's found him in the school, and then there's all the fallout then about Justine getting attacked and that. So Liam's obviously one of the suspects. Yes. So Mr. Griffiths and Mr. Robson go to go to St. Joseph's to, to try and find her. At, and at this time, some of the lads from Grange Hill are dead. They were going to go to St. Joseph's and find out. And yeah, yeah. Told, Snowball effect. Yeah, they told yeah. Justine, and Justine was like, "Look, it wasn't." It, mm. it wasn't St. Joe's, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, too late by then. Yeah. <laughs> so they go to the school, but Liam didn't know what had happened to Justine because he thought he'd been stood up. He'd done that typical lad thing of, yeah. well, I'm not, I'm not ringing here. Yeah, threw his toys yeah. out of the cot. That's yeah, it. yeah, yeah. yeah stubborn, I'm not ringing it. Came in. Yeah, yeah. And then Liam then goes to, to Grange Jill to see Justine. And the lads who he told to go and to, to go and get it, they had they'd been picking flowers from the guard at Grange Hill. And when <laughs> a lot there's there's a cracking scene with Liam and three three of the younger lads, Jack Owen and a couple of his mates. He says to Jack O, go and get Justine D for me. He goes, Well, it'll cost you. And Liam says, Yes, well, it, it'll, it'll cost you a clout if you don't go and tell it. Yeah. <laughs> and he hits him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, well. <laughs> oh so yeah. And then, but he ends up buying the flowers from them for Justine. Yeah. Yes. 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 Um, he, was a ro- he was a romantic. Yeah. <laughs> he was a romantic son. He was. He was. But then, obviously, the uh, people it was a complex like, character, Neil. Yeah. A complex character. <laughs> and as Liam and Justine are walking away from the school, this is where the first real sort of gang thing happens because Ray, Nick. And Richard and some of the Granger lads were there, but so were them two lads who had yeah. the thing with from St. Joseph yeah. with, with Liam. And that's when it first starts sort of getting a little bit edgy and a little bit uh, tasty. 
Yeah, and I've got to say there, because everyone talks about him, but Kelly George, who played who played Ray. I, I, Ray, yeah. Did you know Kelly before that? I kind of kind of did, yeah, because, you know, the, 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 there was... Uh, was it Sylvia Young's Kelly? It was, wasn't it? I think, was I think so. Young's or was it? I think it was Young's. Sylvia Young's. It was Sylvia yeah. Young's. And his dad, his dad, uh, I did a job before that up in Birmingham called YS. And his right. dad was a chaperone for one of the kids on that. Oh, I was right. just turned 17, so it was my first job that I didn't need a chaperone. So, And so I spent about six months with his dad there, and his dad right. were a cracking bloke, really. Oh, absolute cracking bloke, as is, as is, uh, as is Kelly. So we yeah. kind of knew each other anyway. So yeah. we had some fun. Yeah, man. He's, yeah, he's a good kid, Kelly. He's a great kid. And, a great uh, kid. and 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 Desmond Askew as well, who was Des, like, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. A, a kid, like just a, a face of 80s television, I think. With yeah. Desmond. Like Desmond's yeah. been on here. And I said um, the number of things I saw him in before he was in Plain Jail was just yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you know what? A very professional lad as well. Des, yeah. very, both of them anyway, and they were both so generous. Yeah. On that job, mate, they were so generous. I got yeah. welcomed straight away. All of them. You got welcomed yeah. straight into the family straight away. Oh, you know, even though we're like opposing characters and stuff, and it, you know, yeah. none of that. It was just uh, it was just yeah. yeah, they were all very, very generous and very, oh. very sort of welcoming. Yeah, it was a good and I'm not just saying that for you Brilliant. know the cliche sec, it really was. It was a it was a they were very, very, very generous. Yeah. Tremendous. And so there's obviously that little bit of animosity then between the two sets of lads and uh -huh. He said he was just come to see if Justy was all right. You know, we didn't want any trouble. But to be honest, that was the start of the trouble, <laughs> yes. wasn't it then? Yeah. Because one of the St. Joe's lads said he did that some of their lads were going to go back and wreck that garden. That the yes. yeah. was like Justine and Liam are walking to school the next day. And there's a lad sitting on a wall. I don't know if you remember this. It was like basically getting these snippets coming back as you're oh, saying it, mate. It's almost like like a block of flats or maisonettes or something. Yeah, and there's lads sitting on a wall, but you can't see what's it, it's it's like a drop. So he starts having a go and he says, "Oh, you're on our patch." He says that's it to Liam, yeah. and he starts yeah. arguing, and Liam pushes him off the wall. But like I say, you, you can't see, like, but you just hear like this clatter. And I just think, oh my God, like, you know, when, like, we'll, we'll talk a bit more about the fights and stuff, but was there much, like, health and safety going on? In, in things oh, like yeah. That? I mean, I'm pretty sure there'd have been a crash mat there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was, uh, it was all, it was all done to the book. Really? <laughs> yeah, then... No school children were harmed in the making of <laughs> right, this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So some of the younger St. Joe's lads did go back to the guard. Yes. To start to start smashing it up. Um, boys. But they were chased off by Jacko and, and, and some of his mates. Uh -huh. And this led to Liam and his mates meeting up with Ray and his mates again. And it was like a proper like war council. You said West Side yeah. Story before it, about, it about, about yeah. Little Shop of Horrors. But this was massively like Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This was massively like a war council. And I, you know, you watch it and you think, all right, it's got to be dramatised. Uh -huh. It's got to be. But I couldn't have imagined that going on it, like, <laughs> in, in it, certainly not in the high school I went to anyway. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't, it, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't have been that civilised, would they? No, not at all. <laughs> um, because one of the lads who'd been wrecking the garden had his arm in a sling, and the lads were like, yeah, he did that falling over. But there's a there's a there's a brilliant bit. So obviously Liam's at the front because Liam's like cock of the school, isn't he? He's he's, he's the big man, and uh, he he turns and he says, "Bring him forward." And you think, well, oh, oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! Yes. Um, and they're like, "You look, you shouldn't be beaten up first years." But they're like, "Well, yeah." But he did it. He did it running away. He shouldn't have been here, like, because Liam says we want compensation, and you. How, what, 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 how's that going to work? You know what I mean? And <laughs> the Grange Hill lads stand the ground, they don't give them any aim. And then there's a bit where other St. Joe's lads are picking on Grange Hill first year girls, and one of the twins, one of the Buckfield twins, Natasha yes. Stevens, yes, um, put, pushes them off their bikes, and there's another chase. And then later on, the lads see uh, Natalie Stevens. Uh, not knowing they were twins, and there's a 
and there's a bit of a chase, but then Liam comes in then and tries breaking it up, tries getting them to leave yeah. to leave well, them alone. Uh huh. And then these Ray crazy sees, mixed up kids. Yeah. <laughs> and then Ray sees it, and Ray starts having a go. Then it's human. Liam is <clears> involved, yeah. and that then led to the massive, massive fight. The the, the, the massive, showdown. The massive <laughs> standoff. <laughs> I remember we filmed that on a Sunday morning. I remember. Right. It was a so, yeah, you, you, you need to tell me stuff like that because I've had quite a few people who were involved in that and yeah. they've yeah. all got stories about that day. Now, I'm imagining it was a little bit different for you because you were an adult. So, yeah. it would have seemed different, but do you, do you have any, anything on that one? It was a really sunny morning. I remember it was a Sunday morning and we filmed just across the road from White City Studios, I think it was, did a BBC uh-huh. Studios and a, and a piece of a piece of like open ground there. Yeah. So it was a big, vast sort of open space. Do you know what I do actually remember from that? I, I got the tube, the first tube in the morning. Right. Sunday morning. <laughs> so no, it must no, it was it wasn't June, it was September time. But it was one of those really nice September mornings, right. I think. And yeah. I was sat on the tube and I'm, I'm, I'm half asleep because it's like the first tube Sunday morning. And I, and I heard this buzz and I looked down and I got, there was a, a wasp. I got stung by a wasp. <laughs> and I stood up on, in, in this in this tube, central line tube, and I, I could hear it and, it, and it. and I started going, and all these people were looking like, what's, what's, what have we got here? But who's this mentalist on it? And, and it stung me right in my stomach. That was my <laughs> first memory of that day. So that 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 gave me the, you know, I had, I had the... Uh, I had the retention from that. Yeah, <laughs> I held it all in with that. So that was a, and it, yeah, it was a big, it was a bit of a rumble, wasn't it? It was a full yeah. rumble because it was like, yeah, people have said, you know, that they bust in loads of kids. Yeah, say, and there was just hundreds of kids, and yeah, it Alan was like K- a scene from Ben Hur. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Yeah, Alan Alan Cave was on. Alan Cave was only like eleven or twelve, and he said he was absolutely terrified. <laughs> really was it all bless him genuinely terrified that wow. day he, said, he was convinced that there was people smoking crack and all kinds there he said oh, he God. said he, he said he, he was convinced like, I, don't, uh, I don't remember that I don't remember <laughs> that I might have had a bar of caramac <laughs> but I don't remember any crack when I was so, smack, crack or crows out. but there was <laughs> <laughs> but there was so many people involved yeah and then, yeah, it was a big. It, yeah, they did. It was a big old uh, for that. You know, big old scene for that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and 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 as the fight's about to kick off, Justine and Chrissy came in with Baby J. Yeah. yeah. And the three of them were able to break up this year. Was it? That was it. Fight. Humanity. I mean, yeah. Womankind <laughs> saved us again, mate. Um, and then obviously the there's, there's there's one solitary police car then turns off and everyone. Everyone legs it. Um, <laughs> ev- everyone, everyone legs it. Because, yeah. you know, they've been there saying, you know, you, what are you doing? To think about what you're doing. But then the police car comes and everyone scatters except for Justine, Chrissy, and the baby. Yep. And that was yep. sort of it, really, between like the school fights. Because then another storyline came in then. There'd been some sort of inkling about like gang fighting out you know uh-huh. in in the area and Liam and Justine had actually had an argument about it. She did about the Eagles and the Hawks. Oaks 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 and <laughs> so I, I can I can see that it's never left it. Um, Hawk, Hawk till you Listen, die is that what we're saying? Yeah 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 it's hanging but, on my backside only on the left yeah. side <laughs> He, Liam told Justine that he wasn't involved. The liar. He was and, a liar. And he then was he, torn. He was torn between love and honour. Yeah. And then he gave her a token ring. Do you That's remember right. that? It, it wasn't. It wasn't an engagement ring, but yeah. the implication. Yeah, we know what it meant. But I we think, like, obviously, with Justine being so sensible as well, she didn't want to like start doing anything stupid like that, you know. Um, yeah. yeah. Before she she was ne- it was necessary, and then. A few days later, Liam's on his bike and two lads stopped him. Two lads stopped him saying he was on their territory. Mm-hmm. And it, but then, you know, he, he shouts at them, do something about it. He smacks them both in the face, rides off on his bike, turns around and he says the immortal line of Hawks, Hawks, Hawks. <laughs> Absolutely. 
I peaked, Anna. I peaked. Oh, oh, so, oh. So. <laughs> Which obviously then meant it showed us that he was involved. He, he's, he's lied. In, he's in the gang. He's, he's lied against. to Justine. And then the next day, we see him spraying the word Hawks on yeah. the wall. Yeah. He's revealed and, himself, hasn't he? Yeah. And then he was with one of his mates, but then they were fronted then by some of the Eagles. But they ran off and they were chased and they actually ran through Chrissy's garden. That's right. Yes, yes. If yes. you remember that. Yes. And then, so that that night, Liam and Justine are, um, are in Chrissy's. And Chrissy actually says to Liam, are you involved in that? And he says, no, no. And she's like, good. She, you know, she was, she thought she'd seen him get chased. Yes. And um, she was worried that he was going to be involved. Justine thought that he wasn't involved. So he, he said, oh, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Obviously, as you said, they're getting stuck between love and honour. So in, in the meantime, Ray was talking to his brother, Kenny, Denzel Kilvington. Uh-huh. And he heard that there was going to be a fight between the Eagles and the Hawks. But he says to him, the Hawks have got no chance. He said, it's like if Darlington were getting drawn away to Arsenal in the FA Cup. <laughs> he, said, <laughs> that sort of thing. he said, they've got no chance. because that. And then that night when, when, Ray, when Liam is in, Chrissy's with Justy, he says he's got to go and finish his, his homework. That's right, yeah. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. And, and he rides off. And Ray finds out that the fight's happening that, that, that night. And he gets a couple of his mates in Kenny's car to go and they go. He, they, he said basically, "I want to go and warn Liam, tell him he's got no chance." And then whatever he does, then is up to him. It's 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 not my fault then. So they go looking for a few places in Kenny's car, and then they get stuck in traffic. And Kenny tells Ray to go and find out what's happened. And obviously, Ray then finds that the traffic stopped because Liam. I'd been it. No, spoiler alert. Done. He's done. <laughs> He's done. He's and 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 you he know was what? If by a car, wasn't he? Yeah. Well, no, it was actually in the first script. I was going to be on a motorbike as well. I was like, "All ah, right, okay." I'm having this, man. It's a Steve McQueen yeah. moment. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get. I'm in a collision on a motorbike, and boom, I'm out. I'm done. Right. It ended up being a BMX. Yeah. <laughs> and it was a and it was a BBC tr- prop truck. <laughs> Because you just saw the wheel, the wheel, it yeah. on the, me on me on the deck, a little bit of claret and stuff, and it came up the wheel of the, of the bike, or maybe it was even the the, the, um, the cogs or something, and then it went up to the wheel of the car, and it was a BBC props truck that they used for it. <laughs> yeah, wow. So, yeah. yeah um, so, yeah. He, he, Liam had been hit, hit by a car and killed. And yeah. Now, usually, that would have been it. For a yeah. character in Grain Jail. But there was actually, I don't yeah. remember, there was actually two more instances that Liam appears. Because one is the very next day. Justine's walking out of her house. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. She sees a lad in a St. Joe's uniform. Yeah. And assumes, just assumes it's, it's Liam. It, it's Liam. And yeah, yeah. stops and says, All right, Justine. But then she realizes it's not him. Yes. Yes. But then the next. Time we, we see him once more in series 16. And this the next, next is that the next series, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. this is a first for Grangeville because he'd never, yeah, done a, he'd never done anything like this mm-hmm. um, before. Because Liam appears as a uh, like a ghost or a, a memory yeah. or, or a dream, premonition, <laughs> yeah, to so Justine because she's gone to spend a weekend with another lad, a lad that she yeah, met. she's obviously feeling she's been feeling guilty. About, she still loves him. It's unrequited love. She loved Liam. And he yeah. loved her, you know. He loved her. And, and he came back to tell her that, you know, it's time to let go, Justine. <laughs> now, I have to talk about that. Like, so, first of all, when they said, yeah, will you come back and do this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was, it, was, did you think it, this is a bit weird or did you just think, I'm getting paid for this, let, let me go back? <laughs> no, of course I didn't think that, Neil. <laughs> Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> it was a strange one. It was a really strange one. And I was like, well, that's, yeah, that's different. Um, and I was, I was just up for a laugh then. Do you know what I mean? I was up yeah. for it. It was like, come on, why not? I, it, was, it was a jolly bunch. Yeah. And I love, you know, I love Rachel. Rachel's the eighth. I did a really good time working with them on it. And, and it was like, when do you get a chance to go back as a ghost? You know what yeah. I mean? It, it was like, it was like doing stars in their eyes with all backlit. <laughs> well, yeah. Walk through it like an apparition. 
Brilliant. Doing your bit, and then you know it was uh, it, it was very Dickensian. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Christmas Carol type stuff. <laughs> and I walked through it and just went and just said, "So it's time to let go, Chesty." And, and get and on with your life. You know, and in, in 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 some ways, I think you already have. He says something like that. It was like this sort yeah. of like, like yeah, yeah. You're all right in what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Giving his seal of approval. But I have to ask because you're hearing that one. It's a bit bananas in the scene. It, it's all. It, it, I, I don't know, but it looks like you have been hit by a car. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe there was a bit of that. Maybe it's, you know, as you last saw him. There's just a few bits, which are just a few. It, was, it wasn't as clean as as, as, it, as, it, it as, as, as Liam had had it in the past. No, let's shall yeah. we say. Like. Okay, so then you move on then from Green Jill. And uh-huh. obviously, you're, you know, you, you carried on acting. Um, yeah. Be, yeah, very lucky. And yeah, and I, like I was looking, you were in sort of pretty much every sort of like British drama or period drama or you know things like because you did Heartbeat and uh, uh-huh. Sh- Sharp. Sharp was great. Yeah, <laughs> that was it. It was a good that year. There was a couple of really hectic years that year with Soldier, Soldier, and Sharp. Yeah, they were kind of running back to back, and that the Soldier, Soldier were a grueling shoe and right. amazing. Absolutely. I, I, as soon as I got that, I pinched myself because that was a, you know, that show it peaked at something like twenty six million views. Yeah. You don't, you can't, you wouldn't even hear anything like that now, you know. Right. But yeah. as, on a, on a, on a, you know, now we're streaming and stuff. Obviously, that's a different. It's a completely different sort uh-huh. of medium now. But back then, Sky TV had only just started, so it, cable wasn't massive. Uh, so ITV, BBC vying for their big shows uh-huh. you know tuesday night between that run up to christmas that side of christmas peak viewing times tuesday yeah. night nine o'clock and it'd peak at like 26 million viewers man that's that's like you know that that's unreal, FA Cup it? stuff, isn't it? Do you know what i mean yeah so it was a big old show and it already been sort of established before i went on to that um and then i started on that and we went i did a few episodes in england in, in uh started in windsor barracks i did my basic training in about 20 minutes Right, <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, that and then uh, out to Africa for a few months, uh, <laughs> and then and then on the sharp, which I, I, I had a couple of weeks off for Christmas. Right. Uh, no, I know, I know. I we came back from uh, Africa, uh, sort of September, October time, September, October, and then and then straight out. I had about like a week in England, a couple of weeks in England, and then out to Turkey to film sharp, right. and got back literally a couple of days before Christmas because we were delayed coming back. And then I'd like a week off at Christmas and then straight back on to the next series of Soldier, Soldier. It was yeah. funny when we went, sorry, I'm digressing. And we went out to film right. Soldier, Soldier in, in South Africa. Uh, Vince, Vincent Matthews. All right, uh, yeah. He'd, he'd just come back. He'd been travelling around the world and he'd, he'd, done, he'd, he'd been on a bit of an adventurous thing for a couple of years. And I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going out to Africa. I'm filming Soldier, Soldier. And he went, I've got just a thing for you for Africa. I said, what? He said, I've got a... I've got a survival knife here. I'm like, what? In, in it's like one of those Bowie things. Sorry, I did. I'm, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm, 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 now we're talking about this. But it was one of those. It had a handle with, with the screw top in it, and then it had a fishing line in it and everything, <laughs> and a compass and that. I said, Vince, mate, I'm staying at the Holiday Inn. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to need it. <laughs> Brilliant. Said, How did you get through customs with that anyway? But yeah, yeah bless him. Bless him. Yeah. Brilliant. Sorry, Brilliant. digressing. No, it's but, yeah, right. Sharp, Sharp was lovely. Sharp was a great job. I loved Sharp as well. Exactly. It was a real, a full-on period drama, that, wasn't yeah. it? I Leaving my costumes, I had holes in my boots and stuff. Right. It was a real... And I learned how to shoot a musket, which was just... Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's fantastic. I love all that stuff. We're lucky. We're very lucky. Like I say, told you, told you, I, was, I remember being in Africa, being on the back of a, a flatback uh, Land Rover with a mounted machine gun and going... Like James Cagney. Pinching myself, going... I'm getting paid for this. Yeah. <laughs> no, so lucky. So even at the time, I knew it was a special job. I yeah. know some lovely, how many people went through that show? You can't even, the list of people that were on it. Uh, a wonderful experience. Uh, again, the cast and the crew, phenomenal. Amazing, amazing experience. I was so lucky. Because I mean, so the, the thing about Soldier Souls, yeah, I, I, I didn't always watch it, I have to say. I don't think I was the demographic for it, if I'm completely no. honest. In, in yeah. 19, when I was a 21 year old lad in 19, well, why would you? Like, why would you? Um, why would you? Well, yeah. It was it, 
the thing about it is everyone just assumes everyone thinks told you sold yeah Robson and Jerome. But yeah. it wasn't, was it? Because as you say, it was on it was like seven series or something, and and they were only I mean, in the first three or four. No, they did the, well, the first five series for them. Right. They did the first five, was it five or four? I think it was five. Right. Yes, five series they did. And it was their show, mate. They, yeah. they, you know, they, they, they were standout characters, then they made it and they were, you know, they sort of laid, laid down the foundations for everything else. And it, yeah. yeah. But there were so many people, so yeah. many people that went through that show. So many who were, you know, big, big actors now and, you know, uh, worldwide success. Uh, it was a yeah. It was, was a it? massive. Well, Gary Love. Gary Love was Gary in it. Gary Love was in it. Yeah, yeah. another yeah, uh, another, another Green Jail alumni there. Eh? <laughs> yeah, Love. yeah, yes, yeah. brilliance, brilliance. Even oh. Boise was in it, mate. Yeah, <laughs> tremendous. <laughs> Even Boise was in it. We stood outside his caravan, like you know, like like Waynesville, going, "We're not worthy." We're yeah, not worthy. <laughs> it's, you know. yeah, yeah. Brilliance. Brilliant. Lots of people. Google Scott, Jimmy Cosmo. Uh, just, yeah, wow. list, the list is endless. Yeah. Endless. Endless. Um, and then you did, you know, peak practice. And then you did Cory, uh, you know, yeah. as a, a northern actor being in Cory. Like, like the pinnacle. You know what I mean? <laughs> You've got to do that. Yeah. You? You've got to do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you were in that quite a bit. You were in, what? Well, I've got Dan's. Um... I, I did about a year on and off. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Jimmy, yeah. Jimmy Sykes. Yeah, right? Jimmy Sykes. Um, yeah. And then I need to talk to you about this. And you mentioned it earlier. 24 hour party people. Oh, yeah. And you played <laughs> Sean Ryder. Now, was it easy to play him? <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me tell you about that one. How long have you got? <laughs> yeah. Because uh, I was doing Coronation Street at the time. And what was interesting in that when, when, when we started on that, when I got it, Started filming in the in the January, and uh, so I'd, I'd work on that all week, and then I'd do some scenes. And one, I had to do a full weekend. I just or a Sunday doing all scenes for Coronation Street. So it was like the, the, the sort of mad differences between you know yeah. with Winterbottom. You just Michael Winterbottom. You just put a mic on and you go out and just play. It's all improvised, and it, there's no restraints, no restrictions. And Corey's the discipline. You know what I mean? It's it's they, they work so hard on them shows. Yeah. So hard, it's it, 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 how they can get the quality out that they do at the speed that they do it. You, you've got to tip your hat to them. If, yeah. if 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 you worked in that industry, you know it's a and it's such a a well oiled machine. Uh -huh. the, the, there's so many parts to it from you know the writing process, the production teams, and they've got they'll have several units working at once. So it's a, it's a it's a big and then to fit that in on the side as well. So I, yeah, I went. I'd met Michael Winterbottom a few years before for something else. I don't know. I don't know. And, and then anyway, I think Gina Carter, one of the producers, and Andrew Eaton, one of the producers, I think she'd seen me in 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 Coronation Street. And I was playing a bit of a, a bit of a scally in that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I had my head shaved and all that. And I, 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 and I, said, I think Gina Carter had seen that was one of the producers of 24-hour party people. So then I got a, it was just before Christmas uh, and I got a call. Probably the casting director saying uh, they sent me the scripts and they said, uh, "Is there anything that that, that jumps out to you in the scripts?" And obviously, I'm like Sean Ryder straight away. Yeah. I was a fan of the Mondays back in the day. Anyway, you know it was a, uh, and and then I went, "Well, there's a, yeah, there's a, there's a couple." And she went, "What would I tell you? If, if, what do you say if I said we had cast Sean?" Yeah, I was like, "Boom, come on, let's <laughs> have it, let's have it." And so then I was invited to admit, to meet Michael in Manchester at the uh, Palace Hotel, and I went there. Went up to the suite, sat down and talked to him, just talked. We just talked about back in the day. And a friend of mine, Dean Kavanagh, who's a writer, who writes with Irving Wells, she's got that thing on now, Crime, on, on, on TV now. So Dean Dean was a bit of a DJ back in the day and a promoter and a writer. And always, always, always a creative, you know, yeah. fascinating guy. And we used to go over to, he used to take, over, take us over to Manchester. We used to go to Eastern Block Records and Aflex Palace, into the dry bar, did all that business. So I told this to Michael Winterbottom. And he just went, right, you've got the job. That was it. No audition, wow. no, no, didn't listen to me sing. <laughs> didn't listen to me do it. Didn't, didn't, didn't pick a script up, just said, that's it, you've got the job. And wow. I was just like, I was like, what? And that was like one of them defining moments in your life. And then I just, I was full of joy, full of joy. Yeah. Um, uh, and then, yeah, it, then I was like, hang on a minute. <laughs> it, that's always the great part when you get a job, mate, when you've nailed it and you're like, oh, I'm because it, it's self-affirming, and you know we all. Yeah. I still have that. I still have. I still get the old imposter syndrome. 
Right. In fact, I, I, uh, yeah, yeah, I still get. I was speaking to Stephen Graham about that. I still get that that imposter syndrome. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then when you get the job, and then you're like, I've got to yeah. do it now. <laughs> I've got to do it now. So I've got all this climbing gear now. I've got to climb the mountain. And it, Excuse me, but it but it was a joy that job. Yeah. Can I ask though? Had you met Sean Ryder? No, and I still haven't. I was going to say, if you've had some sense, <laughs> I still haven't. Do you know what I mean? I nearly met him this year at, at Bingley. Right. But by the time I, I by the time I got backstage, he'd 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 he'd, uh, he'd left. So I was there with Rowetta and uh, and Bez, right. having a bit, of chat, having a bit of a <laughs> chat with them boys, isn't it? Uh, it just, as soon as you see him or meet up with him, it, it it brings it all back again. Or anyone that's been on the job, it just brings it all back again. Yeah. I remember, I remember starting out and doing an episode of the Bill, uh-huh. and seeing a couple of the lads who worked on the Bill who'd been in Quadrophenia. Right. And you could tell that they had this little, like, band thing, do you know what yeah. I mean? They the, the, the shared a moment and you could tell. They had that little glint in their eye. We've yeah. got that 24-hour party, people. When I meet up with any of them boys now, we just do it like... Because, yeah. obviously, that was um, Steve Coogan. Yeah. And he played Tony Wilson. Tony Wilson. Tony was... Anthony H. Wilson. I mean, I don't know. How, how big he was in the rest of the country. But yeah, he, he in Gran- massive, Gran- in Granada, Granada land, he was huge. Everyone massive. knew he was. Massive. But yeah, brilliant. And then, obviously, Genius. Steve and, Coogan. Yeah, he was a legend. <laughs> and Steve Sorry, Coogan, a legend as well. Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. I, then, think a bit, I think there's a bit, of, I think there's a bit of Tony Wilson in Partridge, mate. Well, that's it, yeah. I mean, I met, I met Tony Wilson once. Um, yeah. And, he was giving a speech to like, I don't know how many people were in this room. You know, there was 100, 200. But the, there was not a sound. No. Oh, mate, he, he, was, he had everyone. Oh, he had him in his hand. He had him in his hand. Completely. Un, un, unbelievable. Like, you know, there was there was not a man. And yeah. he spoke for ages and it was red hot. And no yeah. one was moving. No one was like trying to like sort himself. You know, like trying to yeah. cool himself. Everyone Engrossed. was... Yeah. Oh, he Engrossed. Yeah. Brilliant. And it was like that to the end, mate. It was like that to the end. He, he, yeah, an absolute pioneer. Yeah, oh, brilliant. A complete pioneer. My favourite scene in that movie, yeah, is when uh, is when uh, London Records come up to buy Factory Records, right? Uh, and and they're in the big office with the big table that they paid two hundred thousand pounds for. That's just MDF yeah. <laughs> wire on it. <laughs> so so and and he gets the contract off the wall and he goes, "What well, he's signed in his own blood." Yeah. Say the artists have got, have got the right to yeah. F off. I've been, been, been sent it for the kids. Uh, whenever they like. And he says to him, he says to him, he goes, I can categorically say I never sold out because I've got nothing to sell. Yeah. Just, <laughs> that to me is just the, the essence of factory records. Yeah. Of what they were. They were com- they were complete hedonists, mate. Yeah. And they, they were in it for that. They were in it for the, you know, it yeah. was just yeah, amazing. Brilliant. That's right. Tragic, but amazing. Yeah. And yeah, you've just mentioned Partridge there. Because you did is that you only did two episodes of Partridge. Now I, I think thought... either two or three. I, I just minded him, mate. I minded I him when I thought you were in. I, I and it must be because I've watched it that many times. Yeah. Like Steve Coogan is just he's a genius to me. Oh. Like, yeah, like I, I must have watched that series of Partridge yeah. so many times. Oh, yeah. I yeah. assumed you were in more. Yeah, but I Partridge, mean, mate. It, it, now the good thing about Partridge now he didn't have to wear prosthetics anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he is that age, but he he's, he is just a he, he's just a genius of a man. I mean, look at the stuff he's done since as well. Yeah, I think Philomena is an amazing movie. Yeah, and his his production company Baby Cow has just given us so much. Um, but I just mired him. <laughs> I just mired yes. him on the job, <laughs> yeah. uh, and then and then got you know got an audition for that and. Uh, there I was on doing a bit on that, and in fact, at that time, because it would we just finished filming, twenty four hour, and, right. and we were doing we had a full year of doing promotions for it, and the, let's just say the parties continued, mate. Right, it, was okay. a, it was a great, it was a rip roaring time, and and so when when we had the premiere the year after, we had a premiere in London, and then we had a premiere in Manchester the night after, so we <laughs> you can imagine, and yeah. then the next day the next day I had to get back to London to start rehearsals for for Partridge. Now, you were in a film called Faith. Yeah, which... Faith, about the minor strike. That's yeah. what I was going to say, yeah. So, obviously, the, the backdrop there is the minor strike. Now, yeah. was that particularly difficult for you to film? 
coming from that area. Uh, in kind of way, in a way, uh, I'm I'm kind of West Yorkshire, so we're just slightly right. out of the the sort right. of pits. But but my granddad, he was a Pontefract fellow, and they were, they, they all his family were miners, and I I remember that vividly at the time being be, being quite a, quite a thing and signing petition, uh, petitions and yeah. with, the, with the Socialist Workers Party and all that stuff. Yeah, you know I mean? and yeah, uh, uh, um, yeah, I remember it being a particularly hard time. Uh, um, we'd had it. We'd had a similar thing. A few, you know, maybe a decade more before. No, I remember. I was young, as a kid, but with with the, with the textile industry, right? My mum were a burler and mender, and she had her own business. She had a lot of lasses working for her, and that and, and that and that went that went south because of the you know the the, uh, the obviously the wool trade completely yeah dissipated and got outsourced, and the same thing happened with the miners. So yeah, it was a. It was a difficult time, wasn't it? Then, in, yeah, in, in, and we're, we're experiencing sim- similar things right now. You know, not to get too political, but yeah. it was it was it was a and it and it and it destroyed communities. Mm-hmm. The one good thing about where we filmed that, we filmed it at Hatfield Colliery, and they've reopened that pit again. Oh, right. It's a private, I think I believe it's a private company that owns it. Yeah, but yeah, a lot of the lads there that that were in that piece were ex miners. Ah, oh, right. And I remember being being quite romantic about it when, you know, I'm going out with them having a good having a good crack with them, going yeah. out for a beer and stuff and saying to them, I'd love to go down mine and do a bit. And they just went, No, mate. <laughs> we no. would not want to do that job at all. And when they explained it to me, you thought, wow, yeah, I don't think I'm Yeah, gonna right, it. okay. <laughs> well, you know, you've got you've got to tip your hat to them boys. But yeah, yeah, that was quite a good it was a good good drama that. Yeah, very good drama yeah. again. Oh. Some lovely people in it, some great people in it. Yeah, yeah, and like, like you say, you know, you, you, you've continued to wear, like, you know, there's just so much. When when I went through your, your sort of CV on IMDb, there was yeah. so much. And one thing I liked was, um, because I watched this, was the street. I mean, great the, the cast in that, anyway, was just again phenomenal. Again, and right? again Jim, Jimmy McGovern, mate, oh, yeah. absolute. Genius tip of the act. Um, Do you know where he got that story from? Go on. We 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 did like a little mini read through with the uh, uh with 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 the actors and Jimmy were there we were there and, and we'll ask us said how where do you get he said it because it, it's a great story it's twins twin brothers one's uh, on his own ex ex soldier got a good army pension uh-huh. dispensable income nice swanky flat. Got all all the you know all the mod cons and then his brother's a bit downtrodden and he's he works for, uh works uh, uh he's a civil servant right and he's a bit downtrodden it's, it's he's not making ends meet because he's not getting much money and he hates his job uh a bit estranged from his wife they're, they're drifting apart a bit and then obviously his, his brother he, they go to what the, the city fans and they're watching the city game round at the 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 the, uh, the ex squaddy's house in his in his swanky apartment and he chokes mm-hmm. on a on a sherbet pit and dies. So the other brother assumes his identity. Oh, wow. So the lad goes to his own funeral and watches his wife going through it. And uh, it's just a simple story, isn't it? And he, yeah. got it from a plumber in Liverpool. he got it from a plumber in Liverpool. Wow. Just. Wow. The stories are out there, aren't they? Yeah. Wow. Because obviously, I, I, like, I, I, was that, so that's the one. If I'm right, the cast you so you there was David Fulis was there and David Timothy Spall and Tim Ma- Spall, yeah. Mark Benton, brilliant. Um yeah. But Jack McMullen, who played yeah. the lad, he was in Grange Hill. I didn't know that. Yeah, he, wow. he came in the little food. <laughs> yeah. He's popping up, mate. He, he, popping he was up. in Grange Hill as well. Listen, Grange Hill was a great training ground. Yeah. It was a fantastic training ground for the techniques of of, of working in TV. I learned so much from it. The yeah. directors were patient. Uh, like I said, they were all very, very welcoming when you went on it. And yeah, I learned so much on that show. Brilliant. About the technical side of things, yeah. Brilliant. Now, like, that, 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 as I've said, there's so much on your CV. And you've worked with, like, so many, like, you know, just phenomenal people. Do you ever get starstruck? Always. Right. Always. Which, uh, yeah, I just, I... I I still can't believe it. I get complete, uh, like I say, uh, imposter syndrome all the time. Yeah. I did a movie in Ireland with Tim Robbins, you know, as in, as in, you know, Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. We had to go to a meet and greet the first night, and I went, Tim, my name's Danny. He went, yeah, I know. I'm wow. Like, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, always. 
Brilliant. Always get staff. Go no, on, you, you've got to get over it. You've got to, because you, you've got to work with people. Do you know what I mean? But, yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. So, just before I move on from here, there, there's something I wanted to talk to you about. I know it was a short that you filmed called Abduction. Yes. Yes. Right. Now, when, when I read that, I thought that. I was only like 16 minutes long, but when I read the synopsis on yeah. that, I thought that that's that's unreal. Can you, you explain what that was? So it's just a little sci-fi thing. You know, the lad, in fact, I've seen him a day because I've had to do a self-tape for something else and he's helped right. me with it, Adam Morrison. Right. I met Adam years back and he and he, he always he was a bit of an amateur filmmaker. And him and his mates used to do a thing like, you know, like Jackass? Yeah. He used to do these little pranks yeah. and he used to film them and he showed me what he'd done and he'd edited it. And it was, I said, listen, mate, you've got a, You've got an eye for this. And I, his background is his graphic design anyway, so he's pretty good with all that kind of stuff. And then he started messing about with different, you know, effects and stuff, and he showed me what he could do. I said, well, if you ever want to do anything, mate, let's just do it. I'll, I'll, I'll. And so we just did this, put this little thing together, me and a pal of ours, Jez, and, and his son's in it, and his, his son helped me out today with this little, uh, with doing this doing this um, self-tape, and his wife's in it, and his dog's in it. Yes. And then he just put it out and it, it did all right at some film festivals. So we're actually doing another one now called uh, The Moor. Right. And it's about it's about a vigilante werewolf. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> Not all everyone apart from apart from one character in it who's 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 my sidekick. You you don't feel sorry for any of them because right. they all deserve what they get anyway. <laughs> right, okay. They, they, there's like fly I, I'm playing a fly tipper, a builder who's a fly tipper up on the moors. There's there's a guy with a dog whose dog keeps Leaving excretion everywhere, and he don't pick it up. Right. Uh, there's a property developer, uh, a greedy property sort of yuppie developer, and and, and so the the werewolf takes all them out as well. So it's a yeah. it's it's a, it's a werewolf with a conscience, with a social conscience. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Brilliant. Okay. So well, we are sort of coming towards the end of the interview. Yeah, man. No, Danny. Um, and I have got a few. Questions to ask yet, but they're all about Grange Hill. Okay. Yeah. Um. So recently, there's been talk of a Grange Hill movie in the way. Yes. Um, yes. Phil yeah. Redmond writing it, Sarah Sugarman uh-huh. directing it. What do you think of the idea of a Grange Hill movie? I think it's a great idea. I think there's a there's a a, gener- a couple of generations of people because it went over. Kind yeah. of, it must have been a couple of decades, nearly thirty years. Was it? Was. it? it must yeah. Be. Yeah. But yeah, that's what I mean. So there's there's the scope for it. Um, I think people would love to revisit it. Yeah, because it was such a big part of our childhood. It was a part, part of my childhood. Like I say, when I first went to London, I, I was you know knocking about with these kids that I've watched yeah. on telly after school in this wonderful drama that that I got. I really got. You know, it, it meant yeah. a lot to me. It was it was something I could relate to. So yeah. and I think. Yeah, I think I think the scope for it, how they put it together, I don't know, but I'm sure they'll work their magic and 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 you know, let's find out. It's it's yeah. Cool. Um, it's a shame there's a couple of the guys that are not around anymore. Yeah. Um but yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. And and if you were asked, would we see a return of the ghost of Leo? <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> anything's possible, I guess. <laughs> In the world of TV, anything is possible. Anything is possible. Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay. <laughs> so then, other than Liam, who was your favourite character in Grange Hill? Ooh. Hmm. My favourite character. Do you know, I've got to go with, and I will, I, I, I've got to go for George Armstrong's. Right. Alan, yeah. I loved him. The sidekick. It yeah. was it was the Robin to, to Batman, and he yeah. was a cool, and it it was just he was an absolute gent anyway, mate. Yeah, he was an absolute gent. Yeah, 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 an yeah. absolute gent. Again, it, it was like it was almost like when we were at college, him and, and his brother Adam. They were like, they were like it, it was like George, like a big brother. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, he was just just a really sound guy, just yeah. an absolute gentleman, and yes. and so for that reason, I go for Alan. Okay, and if you couldn't have played Liam. Which other character would you like to have played? Oh, probably Zamo, I'd say. <laughs> I bet that's a popular one. Giving yourself that uh, that Sean Ryder training there. <laughs> you could have played Zamo. <laughs> yeah, you know, grassroots and all that. <laughs> <laughs> Tremendous. Okay, then, uh, Danny. So, 
the the final question is why do you think there is still such affection for Granger? Because it was real. I think it it just dealt, like I say again, it dealt with the issues that, that kids were going through at that time yeah. and it dealt with it in a really good way and in a way that kids could relate to. Yeah. And they still can, you know, so it's it, it was relevant. It had relevance. Brilliant. It was uh it was yeah, it was on point completely. Brilliant. Um yeah, and the teachers as well, they were they were a big part of it as well. But the yeah. the stories, the stories were predominantly about the kids and their lives. Yeah. And it was real. And it was yeah. real. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, listen, Danny, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, we've been trying to do it for, for a while, haven't we? we, we, we I know, mate. Sorry. Yeah. Please, and thank, thank, you, but yeah. Yeah, thank you for sticking with it tonight because... We've had massive technical issues during this one. Hey, no worries, man. No it, worries. It, it, it hasn't been the easiest one to do, shall we say? Um, <laughs> for, for that, you got to break but, a few eggs to make an omelet. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> but honestly, thank you so much for coming on, giving us your experience, yeah. it, not only of, of your time on Grey Hill, but you know other things that you've done in the industry as well. It's it's been brilliant, brilliant talking to you. Um, so once Loved again, it, mate. once again, thanks very much. Sam so Daniel, thank you. Thank you very much. And to anyone that's listening, I'll speak to you next time. Cheers. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye now.